to the Peer Meet the Students podcast, where every month we showcase a student or researcher from the Peer Pacific Earthquake Engineering Research Center community. My name is Crystal, and I'm here with Rodrigo. We're both from the Peer Student Committee, and today we're joined by Dr. Sifat Muin. Dr. Sifat Muin is a postdoctoral researcher at the Pacific Earthquake Engineering Research Peer Center. She finished her PhD in civil and environmental engineering at UC Berkeley from Professor Khalid Mosalan's group. In 2018, she earned her Bachelor of Science and Master of Science in Civil Engineering from Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology and UC Berkeley, respectively. Her research interest lies in ethical engineering with an emphasis in on structural health monitoring, machine learning, and response-based damage detection. She has published over 25 research publications in the most reputed platform in the field. Dr. Muin is an active member of a Structural Extreme Events Reconnaissance, a STEER Network, and the Engineering Research Institute, ERI. Welcome, Sifat. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. We're going to start out uh, with a few short, fun questions. Okay, that's, um, that's fun. Let's see. <laughs> if grad school were a food, what do you think it would be? Dark chocolate. It has the bittersweet element of uh, grad school. And also it's not everyone is going to like it, but those who do like it, they like it so much that they actually want it more. <laughs> What's something that you like doing? So it'll be spending time with my toddler. Uh, and my current favorite is actually listening to audiobooks. Uh, I've just bought this uh, pair of ear pods. I'll just put them on and do chores and walk and keep on listening. What time of the day do you feel you're most productive? So during my PhD time, um, I was a night owl. So I was very productive at night. But that's before my son was born. Now I'm productive whenever he's not around. <laughs> what advice would you give your young self? Uh, for instance, do you have any advice for being a woman in engineering? I used to get very down for things like bad grades or meeting not going well, things like that. So I'll tell my young self to think how, uh, you know, whatever is making you feel bad would matter five years from now. If it's not that important, then just move on. If there's anything for women in engineering, you are as good as anyone else. So mm. just keep on going. Which course do you enjoy the most in school? At Berkeley, actually, the course I liked most wasn't a structural engineering course at all. It's a course I took with the architecture department. It's assessing mm -hmm. indoor energy. But the most exciting part about that course was, you know, we get to put sensors on a building and then monitor it for a whole week. So we did that as a group project and then went back, did analysis, did the visualization, presented. So that was really fun. Thank you for answering the knowledge questions that we've done so far. Uh, we'd like to get to know a little bit more about your academic career uh, with the following questions. Sure. What made you interested in earthquake engineering? It was more gradual process. The first time I was exposed to earthquake engineering was back when I was, I was doing my undergrad. In my senior year, we have to do a thesis. The topic for me was uh, pushover analysis. Then I came here, I got more and more involved in different kind of earthquake engineering projects. So for example, in master's, I did my uh, response of long pier structures to far field earthquake. And then I was doing an internship at Peer where I was working with the ground motion modeling team. So, you know, as I got more exposed to earthquake engineering projects, eventually that kind of hooked me on to earthquake engineering. Do you have any specific research objectives? So my research objective is to enhance post-disaster resiliency. So resiliency means, you know, to getting back to pre-event state, right? So for earthquake, it means getting everything to how it was before the earthquake. So one of the main aspects to get to resiliency is to assess the condition of the structures, like how, whether they're safe to resume operation or it needs repairs or not. So the current traditional way is the inspectors go in personally and check and then tag them green, yellow, or red based on whether they're safe to be in or they're damaged. So this process takes time. My research objective is to make this process automated. 
So it doesn't take as long as it usually takes. So what I'm trying to do is to get data from sensors, from the structures, and develop methods using machine learning tools that will monitor and assess the condition of the structure right after the earthquake. And the overarching objective here is to develop this holistic monitoring and assessment system that will, in real time, monitor how the structures are doing. That will help make decisions and help the disaster striking community. The one thing here is that uh, I also feel very strongly that my research should be impacting the community. So translating my research to practices something uh, as I am really thriving to. So that's, you can say that's my another research value or mm. research objective. What are your career goals? I want to stay in the academia and keep doing research. Um, that's the plan. <laughs> uh, it, it's hard, honestly. So uh, I'll keep on working and see if that's something uh, I can achieve. Um, if not in the academia, then I'll try to have some research position. You know, there are national labs and industry. So research is something I want to keep doing. So this is my goal now, whether it's in the academy as a faculty or whether it's as a research scientist in somewhere else, that's something uh, the future will tell. You do some research related to machine learning, artificial intelligence. How do you think these tools will impact structural engineering practice in the long term? I see a tremendous amount of potential for artificial intelligence in structural engineering and what it will bring to the field is the rapidness so you know structural engineering is a mature field with uh, tried and tested methods but everything takes quite a bit of time you know so it takes time to develop models it takes time to construct it takes time to monitor structures so i think this is where uh, artificial intelligence is essential so let's take the example of regional simulation i think a will be extremely useful in such cases uh, as developing individual models for each structure is is a non-trivial uh, task it, it's also not feasible but we can develop machine learning and deep learning algorithms say that can look at the images of the structures and give you information about certain components and like the sizes which you can use in your model and think uh, say you can use transfer learning to uh, you know uh, get information from the existing models and then incorporate whatever the image based uh, machine learning tools are get, giving you and then develop the models very easily so that will make the whole process a lot faster than what it is currently. The other example is data-driven structural health monitoring where I'm working, the acceleration data can tell you how the structures are doing. There's a tremendous amount of application that can be done with artificial intelligence uh, in structural engineering. To set it up, to validate, uh, this will take time. But once it's set up, the implication of it is going to be huge because imagine uh, once you set it up for Bay Area, say, for regional simulation, it's not going to take time to scale it up to whole California. Right? So I think we should keep trying to bring in more artificial intelligence in, uh, in structural engineering for our own sake. What activities in your research have been most challenging? I would say actually that was writing because compared to other aspects of research, at least for my research, you know, which were, you know, writing the course, doing data analysis, everything was more exciting than writing. <laughs> and it took a lot of effort even to get started, even like how you motivate yourself and how you keep on going it like that whole thing. Actually, I need to teach myself and I need to do a lot of research in it. I'm still learning, actually. I also realized that that is something absolutely essential because if you're doing a research and no one knows about it, like what's the point, right? So mm -hmm. it is very important to write and uh, write the reports, write your dissertation, write your papers and let people know what you're doing. 
Can you tell us about your experiences in publishing? The hard part was actually to learn about writing. Before starting to write, I thought this is something that, I mean, you just write, right? But that's not the case. There's a, a learning curve even to that. You have to know about the right tools that can actually help you writing, right? And then the formats matter, uh, the style matters. And also then there is the habit that you need to develop. Getting the first one is the hardest. You learn to go through the process of submitting, then getting it back, then handling the reviews, then, uh, you know, then replying to the reviews. 90% of the time, it is going to improve your manuscript. And the idea here, even I'm still learning it, is to keep on writing, make sure you have a habit. As long as you build this habit, you're going to publish more and more. Uh, one of the practice that is kind of working for me is uh, to set along a block of time every day to write. Now that writing can be anything, right? It can be whatever analysis did you did yesterday, or it can be a very draft abstract, or it can be, uh, you know, just preparing a figure. Fat, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate this chance sharing with you and listening from your experience and your advice. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a wonderful time learning more about you and your work. And before you go, if any of our viewers or listeners have any questions for you, is there any email or social media you like people to use if they want to reach out to you? Sure, yeah, they can reach up to me in my uh, through my email. It's uh, sifat.moin at berkeley.edu. And also I have a website, it's sifatmoin.com. And then uh, I am also available in LinkedIn and Twitter. Just feel free to reach out in any way you want. This concludes our monthly spotlight for the Meet the Peer Students series. See you in the next one.